Hello and welcome to Auto Inform Online Magazine. My name is Frank Massey. In this toolbox feature, I thought we'd take a look at tools and how we can get the most financial and technical benefit from those tools by adapting them for the different challenges which we face today. I've chosen gauges as a subject and this sits very nicely with a feature in the magazine this month. In particular, I'd like to talk about the technical features with the gauges, but not just that, but how we've actually modified or adapted the gauges for a wide range of applications. We've been challenged all the time by variations in design and fit on vehicles. As an independent, the disadvantage of that is that we have to repair vehicles and, and, and diagnose and investigate vehicles from all manufacturers. That puts a great financial pressure on us to buy the right tool, to have the right ability within our workshop to repair a wide range of systems. So I'd like to begin by looking at the actual gauge itself first. Many of you will have seen this gauge either in our face-to-face -face program or on various features we've filmed in the magazine. It's a gauge we're quite proud of because we've uh, developed the gauge, we've, we've, we've designed the gauge from demands within our commercial environment. It was originally designed for diesel and two of the challenges with common rail diesel is in the actual type of priming systems that they employ. Um, essentially there are two types of system. There is a, a, a vacuum system, in other words where the fuel is drawn by uh, the high pressure pump from the tank. There is no assistance from within the tank. With that type of system we need to measure um, an atmospheric uh, value or a negative or, or lower than atmospheric value. In other words, fuel is being drawn under a negative pressure. There's also the systems that use positive um, priming in a combination of ways. You either have a lift pump, a low pressure lift pump of around plus half a bar in a tank, supplemented by a vacuum pump once again mounted on the back of the high pressure stage, which creates a negative pressure of around minus half a bar to minus one bar. Now, the combination of those two figures means that when you gauge it, you will actually see a zero pressure reading. So you have a whole range of potential readings from a negative value to a positive value. On those systems that use um, supplementary pumps and lift pumps, you'll get about four bar, maybe four and a half bar of positive pressure. So the gauge itself covers the range from minus one bar to plus 10 bar. The other feature that was uh, very much uh, in demand was to ensure flow. Now, on those systems that use negative pressure as priming, the essential part of its functionality is flow, not pressure. Therefore, we wanted to observe flow very clearly in this site block. We also wanted to check for cavitation. Now, cavitation is caused by one of two things. Either a problem in the tank where it's picking up a combination of both air or, 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 or gas, in effect, there are spaces in the fuel flow, or a blockage, partial blockage in a fuel filter, whereby if the demand from the engine is greater than the flow rate through the filter, once again it will create spaces in the fuel supply. This is cavitation. That cavitation, when it's presented to the high pressure pump, then is a critical problem. Uh, it, it will affect high pressure generation uh, and of course the air fuel ratio of the, um, the, the fuel mixture then is affected. So the side block was also a, a key part of the uh, gauge's design. We also had other requirements of the gauge that they had self-sealing couplings, um, mainly so that the security of the connection was such that we could then literally use this gauge within the vehicle. We could actually do real-time diagnostics from within the vehicle using this gauge, um, actually monitoring both pressure and flow. We also then had a requirement for what we call proof testing. Now proof testing is where we stress the pumps or where electrical pumps are used, either as lift pumps or supplementary intermediate high pressure pumps, to drive these pumps to a higher pressure than would normally be found in the system under, under normal conditions. And to do this, we use a valve to restrict flow. Now by employing that valve, we can check an increase in pressure and also with, with electronic testing technique, measure the increase in current flow because the higher the pressure, the current equally should then increase to match the, the, the physical workload. So those are some of the features that we've built in the, in the gauge. Additional to that, we wanted to protect the gauge 
uh, against potential um, contamination. So we then sort, and you'll see the benefit of these fittings now, that because they are quick release, they fit um, professionally. This filter will protect the gauge against contamination. It will also act as a larger reservoir. So when we're checking flow, this clear housing also assists in that requirement. Now this filter, of course, would normally fit between the tank and the gauge. Um, it's optional. Um, if you're confident the fuel supply is clean, then of course you need not use that particular um, filter. So that's the, the gauge which we use. I'm going to begin by looking at some of the features um, of, of, of the uh, modifications we've done in this drawer first. I mentioned that we have the ability to actually fit the gauge actually in the driving compartment of the vehicle. To do that, we obviously have extension hoses. These hoses would, of course, be connected to the fuel supply, usually under the bonnet. With minimal adjustment to the bonnet, these hoses can then pass through the bonnet. The bonnet will be securely closed, of course, allowing clearance for these hoses, normally at the, um, the trailing end of the bonnet, not the leading edge. These would then pass through an open window or a partially open window to allow the gauge to be in the vehicle measuring real-time pressure and flow. We also have other extension hoses which allow freedom of movement, if you like, within the engine compartment, depending where the fuel filter or access to the hoses are. The draw I wanted to concentrate on most is this one. Now, for many, many years, we have made our own fittings. It was often a frustration that when you buy a predetermined kit, many of the fittings were quickly outdated by evolution of the vehicle, and many of the fittings weren't appropriate to the type of systems which we're working on. So for many years, we've actually um, built our own adapters. It's very interesting that, that several years ago, I was involved in training for a particular diagnostic company, and you may recognize that fitting. And they were aware of the fittings that we were actually producing, and they actually came and duplicated the fittings. They actually converted their system from these fittings to those fittings which we were using. So uh, I often use the expression um, that they've imported some of the uh, modifications which we've done, which is a little bit of a, a compliment, I guess. Um, so that's an adapter from, from the old style of fitting to the fittings which we're using. You may recognize some of these. So these hoses are commercially available. Um, and of course, all of these hoses all fit, in effect, the type of fittings that we use. So there's a number of opportunities of, of uh, obtaining special fit hoses. These, of course, are the Renault fit. Um, these are the Ligris type fitting. And our objective is to ensure hands-free, professional, safe fitting, so that if we're going to drive a vehicle with a gauge attached, we want to ensure there's going to be no fuel spillage at all, and that the safety and quality of the fitting matches the OE um, requirement. All of these fittings come in different applications. Uh, many of the Ford vehicles now use this style of fitting, and they come in different uh, dimensions as well. So there's a whole range of, of, of um, adapters that we've had to um, employ. Um, some of the fittings, some of the PD diesels, uh, we use, in fact, with a, a particular special fitting for the back of the PD engine, the intermediate pump, has the ability to measure the pressure. There's an there's a electrical fuel pump in the tank that produces about 0.5 for bar. That is increased mechanically by the pump at the back of the cylinder head between about one bar at idle to, uh, sorry, about three bar at idle to about nine and a half, ten 10 bar on load. And this particular adapter then allows us to attach the gauge to that system. And if you recall, I said our gauge goes up to 10 bar. So the gauge actually also includes the, the ability to test PD. It's also designed to test petrol systems. Now with petrol systems, um, we have manifold injection at around three bar, four bar system pressure. And we have direct petrol systems, which are an on-demand pump 
which, which run from anywhere from one bar up to around five and a half, six bar. So all of these fittings are infinitely uh, flexible between both diesel and petrol. Although I find that the most demand these days on, on different fittings and adapters comes within diesel rather than petrol. So we've also have a number of devices for step down, step up. We find a lot of hose sizes vary in size. So I hope you can see the advantage of, of producing these fittings in house. They match your requirement and they maximize the financial and technical benefit of the tools which you then rely on. If you're interested in developing your diagnostic skills, please visit the AutoInform website for both details of our face-to-face -face training and DVD learning modules. We are also able to supply a selection of diagnostic tools.